One term you hear frequently when we talk about computer security is firewall. When you set up a computer, you may have been asked to install a firewall, you may have been warned by your operating system that you don't have a firewall installed. So what is a firewall? So firewall, you know, the term firewall comes from a part of a structure that is used to keep fire from spreading. So a wall in a, in a big building or a home that's designed to be fireproof. So if a fire starts in one part of the structure, it can't spread. And a computer firewall is not that different. So a firewall is used to separate one part of a network or one computer from the rest of the internet. And firewalls apply rules about the types of connections that can be made either you know, into that part of the network or out of it. So let's say I have a computer here. And let's say that that computer is my home, my home PC. And so I'm not expecting that my home PC is going to be running servers that other people would want to connect to from outside. Um, so if I don't have a firewall installed, and here's the rest of the internet, what could happen is, let's say I accidentally, uh, maybe I install something by accident, like I click on a bad link in an email or something like that, and I start to run a computer program or someone tricks me into installing this or some you know, uh, person uh, gets this piece of software installed on my machine and I start running uh, a computer, uh, some sort of server, maybe that server is serving illicit content or something like that. And so what will happen is people will start to connect to that machine from outside my machine. And they will be able to access that content. And this may happen without me ever being aware of it. A roommate of mine at college actually discovered at one point that his computer was serving all of this you know, fairly um, unpleasant content to the world because his computer has been, had been infiltrated, somebody had hacked into it, and it started to run this little web server there that was serving all of this, you know, again, very ugly content to people um, outside his machine. He noticed his machine was acting really slow and things like that, and he sort of dawned on him at some point, he found it, and it was, it was sort of a problem. So, so how do I prevent this from happening? Well, a simple way to do this is to just install a piece of software. And in this case, what I would do is I would have a firewall right here, and this firewall would be set to reject any incoming connections. So in the simple case, when I have a machine that I'm not expecting to run a server on, or don't want to run a server on, or don't want to allow anyone to connect to, this works fine. For a lot of machines on the internet, a firewall that pretty much drops all incoming connections is completely suitable because they don't run servers, they're just clients. They just make connections, they initiate connections to servers on the internet. So I initiate outgoing connections, and the firewall is configured to allow those outgoing connections, but if someone tries to connect to me, the firewall will drop that connection. So when it sees an incoming packet that is part of the TCP connection establishment protocol, it'll drop it. It'll just uh, not let it come through to my machine. And so at that point, there is no way to initiate a connection into my machine. If I have a machine, let, let's say I have a machine where I run and run some servers on, so it's possible to poke holes in the firewall for certain ports so that certain services can run. So for example, I might have a machine here. Let me put it over here in my little fake internet. And that machine runs a web server and an SSH server. And so my firewall would have holes for port 22, which allows incoming SSH connections. That's the uh, port that the SSH protocol runs over. And then it would also have a little hole here for port 80, um, because that's the HTTP port. And then if it's running HTTPS, I would also need a hole for port 443. So in this case, the firewall is configured to only allow certain types of connections. So again, if somebody gains access to the machine and saw some malicious, some malicious software that's running on some other port, nobody will be able to connect to it. Firewalls are also frequently used in um, sort of enterprise network security. So I might have a situation where I have a group of machines that are connected to each other and that are running certain services where they need to be able to make connections to each other on certain ports, but I don't want any outside traffic from the public internet to be able to access those connections. So what I would do in that case is that on the router that connects my network to the rest of the internet, I would install a firewall that prevents certain connections from being established from outside my private network 
inside my private network. And so that allows me to run services inside this private network that wouldn't be exposed outside of it. That's why sometimes if you're accessing software at UB, for example, you might need to use a virtual private network client to get on UB's network from outside because of this reason. Because usually there's a firewall that's been set up to prevent people outside UB from using certain services that are only available to people that are part, that are, uh, part of UB's network. And so by using the VPN client, you can actually make it look like you're part of UB's network and then those services will work. So a firewall, very simple concept, just pre prevent certain types of connections. Now firewalls can get arbitrary com arbitrarily compact. Firewalls can get arbitrarily complex. They can uh, block based on all sorts of different reasons. And as protocols have, you know, as, as there's more internet protocols out there, firewalls have responded and firewalls have gotten more sophisticated. So firewalls may block traffic that looks suspicious. Um, they may do all sorts of different things. And so there can be a lot of intelligence that's being um, performed at the firewall itself. But in the simplest case, all I'm doing is I'm just looking at the destination port and if the, that port is open, if there's a hole in my firewall there, I let that connection proceed. If that uh, port is not open, if that port is blocked, I drop it.